recording. So welcome to the chaos community call. It's the monthly call today. Good to see you all. Good to see you, Gear. For everyone who just joined, the link to the meeting minutes I put it in the chat. So since today is the monthly call, we have uh, an agenda to get up, um, updates from the working groups, updates from the software, Google Summer of Code update. We have an upcoming release, so we'll talk about the metrics and the release schedule. We have our chaos con, and the CFP is still open. And finally, there was a request to talk about code of conduct and repositories, and we'll talk about that. I just received a request to do some introductions for anyone who is new and would like to introduce themselves. Of, of course, that's only volunteer, voluntary. So would anyone like to introduce themselves as new to the chaos community? Hey, I can kick it off. Um, so I'm El Marquez. I work for Linux Academy and was previously actively involved with mentorship and diversity in OpenStack. And just kind of looking to, I guess, get involved here. Yes, so this is Doris. Wow, that's okay. Yeah, welcome. Good to have you on board. Would anyone else like to introduce themselves? Then we can move on to the working group updates. Um, who would like to start? Jordan, you can start. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Who is this speaking? Yeah, I, this is Jesus. Hi, Jesus. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't I don't have video output today. And uh, a funny name, I think. Sorry about that. Um, well, uh, first of all, just to introduce myself very briefly. I'm Jesus, uh, working from Victoria and Universidad de Juan Carlos. And I'm involved mainly in the Evolution Working Group and in, in the Model Lab, one of the top groups for you. Uh, with respect to the evolution uh, working group, we have been working in defining some of metrics related to issues. We are still working on that. And in the last uh, two weeks, I think that the most important effort is um, uh, helping our, our Google Summer of Code students that are um, working with reference implementations of the metrics. Um, we are still collecting uh, comments on the, on the um, Metrics related to issues. So, if anyone can uh, can comment anything, of course, it's, it's at the right time to do. And we are having our big weekly meeting tomorrow. And I think uh, this is all from my side. Then maybe you want to comment something else. Thank you, Jesus. By the way, everyone is welcome to edit the Google Doc and help keep minutes and keep them complete. So feel free to edit away. That was the evolution working group. I can give a common metrics working group update. This is Don Foster. Um, so we have been, we've been mostly working on figuring out what metrics we want to clean up and have ready for the release. So we're actually meeting weekly now, at least for, for the rest of this month and possibly a couple of weeks into July so that we can get some metrics ready for the, ready for the release since we're a relatively new working group. We have a lot of work left to do. Um, so that's one of the things that probably probably the biggest thing that we're we're working on um the other recent change that we've made with the metrics working group i can't remember if we discussed it in the last big monthly meeting but we are 
um, now working out of a, a separate repository. So we were working out of the main metrics repository, which was becoming confusing since that's where all of the metrics are and um, we needed to create some focus areas and things. So we now have a separate repository for the common metrics working group. So we are working out of that separate repository and we have three focus areas we've defined so far, which are organizational affiliation, geography and responsiveness metrics. So those are three of the things that we're, we're primarily working on. Thank That's my Dawn. update. Thanks. Yeah. Um, for everyone taking minutes, if you could go down to the bottom where we have I would oh, like to keep the agenda section at the top. Yeah, um, yeah. That's just the right. I want to talk about. I, I apologize. Sorry. Oh, no worries. I appreciate it. So common metrics. Um, sorry, I was distracted. Organizational, geographic. Responsiveness. And responsiveness. That's right, because Daniel, you were the one adding it. Um, yeah. Then I can talk perhaps about DNA. Certainly. Okay, so, um, well, um, I'm, part, uh, I'm Daniel, I'm part of the uh, working group. Uh, we are meeting on uh, Mondays at 4.30 p.m. European Central Time, which is around 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Uh, we had our uh, weekly meeting yesterday, and what was, well, it was a bit more uh, so we have a couple of hours. We were doing a hackathon. Uh, we were working mainly on the uh, releasing cycle for the metrics. So we we released. Well, we sent for pull request for review. So we are working harder, and I think it was quite a successful couple of hours. And the four metrics that we were working on, I'm just going to jump in here. We uh, were talking about family friendliness. Family friendly. yeah. uh, right. Conduct at events. Um, trying to remember what the other one, the other two were. Diversity tickets. Diversity tickets at events, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I don't know the other one. The other one was leadership uh, mentorship. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Daniel. I can so, risk. Awesome. Go ahead, Sean. We've been developing a set of metrics focused on understanding licensing and also understanding a software bill of materials. So we've implemented a prototype software bill of materials for repository scanning using Fusox and Augur. And we're putting out, we're going to be putting that into a user facing front end piece of Augur here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and the metrics that we have proposed um, are on a list inside of our repository, but we're going to add that to the list on Matt's central command shortly. That's uh, my responsibility, so it's behind. That's okay. all. That's, that's Thank you. Okay, summary. So I have a question. What do yeah. you mean by bill of material or metrics so, or bill? So software bill of materials are um, uh, the idea that what is basically knowing what is the list of pieces of software libraries and other projects that are incorporated in something that's deployed inside of the corporate environment so it's thinking about the consumption what I call the consumption side of open source software I think I think a lot of us produce open source software this is this risk question about the software bill of materials is more from the perspective of companies, hospitals, people who want to purchase open source software and are considering it for part of their IT ecosystem and want to understand what are the licensing risks, if any, that are involved and also what's, 
what's the inventory of projects that they can then go out and look at to assess the relative health of the component parts of the thing that in most cases they're purchasing a service to have implemented as open source software in their IT ecosystem. Does that explain it or did I just talk real fast? It made sense to me. If anyone else has questions at any time, please do jump in. Um, I can give an update on, on the value uh, working group. Yes, go ahead, Andy. Uh, so I've got five things to share. Uh, first is um, we are in the process of putting together an email survey uh, that's going to go out to a great number, uh, hundreds of, um, of uh, folks in open source program offices that's being done by Vinod. Uh, second is um, hopefully in the next week or two we'll have an Augur instance that we can use uh, to to start to actually assemble uh, value metrics for you actually have that I, I forgot to send out an email okay uh, awesome it's uh, value.augurlabs.io pretty easy to remember all right okay that's great sorry uh, okay so, would so, you mind sharing the link in the meeting minutes sure uh, yeah I will share it. Although it's, I seem to be, I mean, hang on. I will share it right now. Firefox doesn't seem to like it, but I think that's just on my machine because I, while I was getting it up, it didn't resolve. Long story. Let me know if you have any trouble with it. You shouldn't. So awesome. So uh, Augur instance moving even faster than expected. Um, and uh, one of the things that we're going to do, I think that's that's going to be interesting with Augur, is we're going to we're exploring the idea of parameterized metrics. Uh, so we're going to collect uh, information that's publicly available, and then we're going to allow people to combine that with their own private metrics to to generate data that is perhaps proprietary and uh, unique to their own uh, organization. Um, we also are going to putting together a series of interviews where we're going to go out and talk with with folks in program uh, open source program offices, maybe like half a dozen, and um, that is in preparation for talks that uh, we will do in August. We are accepted to speak at Open Source uh, Summit in North America, and we've put in a. Uh, proposal for chaos con so hopefully that gets accepted and the final thing is over the next week or two uh, we will put together also value metrics we've got a, a collection of uh, metrics on a spreadsheet so we're going to submit that and and uh, hopefully um, actually not just have that uh, be in a spreadsheet but also live in, an, in our instance of auger so that's it the what, what metrics can you name one or two metrics that are currently top of mind or being worked on yes um, there's kind of two two broad categories of metrics that we have been discussing one uh, relates to project managers so um, open source value for repo maintainers and project managers. And, and those metrics relate to economic value, the, the cost of the, the labor cost of creating a repo, the labor cost of fixing a bug, the, the innovation speed, things of that nature. Uh, the other type of uh, value metrics that we have been discussing relate not to project maintainers, but project contributors. And we've broadly sort of um, classed that as, you know, how can we help uh, project contributors make a living wage in, in open source? And so for that, we look at metrics like, um, you know, which, which open source repos are most valuable, which open source repos are being used by large organizations, you know, where are there the opportunities to go in and make consulting fees or, or perhaps get paid bug bounties. Uh, so those, those broadly are the types of metrics we're looking at. Awesome, thank you. Does anyone have feedback, 
questions on any of the working groups? Um, I, wanted, I wanted to mention and perhaps to bring some more context to the new people in the call is that, as you can see, uh, it's an introduction chaos is a set of working groups. So each of the working groups has a specific focus as value or risk or inclusion or uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, then there is a common set of metrics that are part of everything that are the common working group. And then this is the more the most theoretical approach to define metrics. But then you have there there are some pieces of software that were mentioned as over um, so it's Mark Lab or Craigit or Perspective. So there are two main legs that say in chaos. Uh, that by the way, the acronym is Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. So we have the metrics thing with the several working groups, and then the software uh, part where we are developing and uh, trying to, to bring all of this knowledge from the a more theoretical point of view into into practice. So this is chaos. I, I just wanted to clarify all of this. Thank you, Daniel. With that, we can move on to the second branch of chaos, the software updates. Um, so I know we have representatives here from Augur and Grimoire Lab. Would any of you like to go first? Um, I can go first. Um, so we have two Google Summer Code students who are working actively on risk and risk and value metrics right now, implementing API endpoints off of the new schema that we've implemented, which integrates data from GitHub, libraries.io, Augur, Augur's um, facade-based repository miner, and a bunch of other things that we're pulling in. So they've, they've been really actively developing those out and uh, going pretty fast with it actually. Uh, we also have our new worker collection architecture working with GitHub right now and also the Linux badging API. So that's exciting. That's, those are the big updates. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, with respect to Grimoire Lab, I was just uh, taking notes. So we had some improvements in, in Sorting Hat, the identity management uh, component. We also have um, uh, Google uh, some of code students working with, with Real in improving the integration with the model app. Remember that Real is a tool that can run metrics on a specific files on any version of a specific files or in a Git repository. Uh, this integration is basically to produce dashboards with information based on running license analysis or complexity analysis or, or things like that over time. So that you can get a full idea of the evolution of the, of the given project for those metrics. And uh, the latest version was released uh, in May um, 31st, so some days ago. That's version 2.20. Okay, thank you. For credit, I'm just going to put no update. Any questions about the software from anyone? Yeah, George, I just want to ask you if uh, the Grimo Lab is, uh, let's say the Grimo Lab have plugins to talk to the uh, storyboard. To talk into what, to revolt, you mean? To storyboard. You know, at times, it's, uh, sometimes it, it gets information from uh, uh, other sources, let's say Launchpad and things like that, but I'm not, I'm not very sure if it works very well with uh, Storyboard. Is Storyboard a platform, a service? I, I'm yeah, not familiar. No, no I, know, I know Storyboard. I think it's not supported. Danny, maybe you know better? Uh, yes, a Storyboard was created by OpenStack Foundation, as far as I remember. We mm -hmm. used to support this, but uh, as far as you know, the uh, Lab, so when this was metrics in one, Grimar Lab doesn't support Launchpad or Storyboard. Okay. Um, it would be great to have a uh, contribution, so it would be great. If you, ha if you have some interest, let us know so we can, I mean, if you are willing to 
to develop a new backend or so on. So let us know we can help you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Armstrong. Good question. Then we move on to the Google Summer of Code update. We have uh, four students, and we are currently start. Or we started last week the coding phase, or the project phase is what it's called. The four students are distributed two in three more lab and two in Augur. Uh, Sean already um, said the two Augur. Sorry, uh, uh, George. To be more precise, one is working in Gamora Lab, the other one is working with me in the evolution working group and the, in the implementations for the metrics. Okay, thank you. Good. Do you want to talk about what these two students do, the ones that you yes. work with, Jesus? Yes, yes, of course. So the, the one involved in Gamora Lab is working with uh, Graal as I mentioned it a, a moment ago. Graal is uh, this tool for uh, running metrics on every release of every file. And uh, what it does is run external tools and inject that information into the usual remote lab screen of data. And uh, this um, uh, student is now working in integrating that with the database, with Elasticsearch, so that we can have, hopefully at the end of the, of the Google Summer code period, we have dashboards with that information. Uh, the person, uh, the student working in this is, is progressing uh, uh, well, I think. So up to now, it's, it's, it's in good shape, I think. And the, the other one is working uh, in the evolution working group, introducing uh, new uh, reference implementations for the metrics. Uh, we are trying to be as much, um, let's say, instructive as possible when building the, um, the reference implementations, because the idea is to make them in a way that can be easily understood. And for that, we are using Python notebooks. But we are now restructuring them into classes so that the common code is clearly separated in one place and the code is specifically dependent for the metrics is in another place. And uh, this person is also, uh, I mean, this, this new structure is also going to allow having testing on the reference implementation, which seems to be good for avoiding vibrations and all of this. Can you give us the names of the students working on each of these? Uh, I'm sorry, but they're not familiar to the, they are Indian names. And I'm not that familiar to them, but they can tell you in a moment. Uh, in any way, uh, I, I, I talk to them by their GitHub um, handles. One is Polaris uh, 000, Polaris 000, and the other one is in team. Okay. I can I can write the names now in the minutes. I'm I'm sorry for not remembering, but I'm very bad at names. That's okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sean, did you want to add anything about your students? I think I covered it. They've got blog posts that uh, they've sent out to the mailing list as well. I encourage people to read those because it's it's pretty interesting to see the work that our students are doing from their code are getting through to their eyes. Yes, and I do want to encourage everyone here in the community to read the blog post. They're being sent to the mailing list, so you should all have received them. And I think the students are doing an amazing job at really identifying the task that they're working on, at describing the challenges that they're overcoming and how they're overcoming it. So there's, they're really helping um, us to see how they learn. So I encourage everyone to read the Any questions, updates, comments on Google Summer of Code? Then let's move on to metrics release. And I keep forgetting, I always say mid-June is the feature freeze. But I think it's something like June twentieth or so that we June twentieth is exactly what we said, yes. Okay. 
So the goal, the goal of this is for the working groups to identify which metrics they want to release by June 20th and to have them as complete as possible. Starting June 20th, we are entering into a um, phase of review where we can still edit and revise the, um, the metrics, obviously, until July. So we have then one month to put finalizing touches on it. Um, and to make sure that the metrics align across the different working groups. And for getting and, and working up to June 20th, Matt has posted on the, I think he put it on the mailing list, um, how we work. There's a spreadsheet where we track all the metrics that we have and their readiness state. And then each metric has a list of requirements. Um, which includes being part of working group, being part of a focus area, having it been as clearly defined as possible. Um, so every metric that wants to be included in the release has to be checked against that checklist. So thank you to all of the working group members who are working hard as we are working up to this uh, big first release of chaos. I know you're putting a lot of work into this. Are there questions from anyone or comments about this upcoming release? Okay. I'm, I'm glad that there's no discussion, <laughs> need for discussion, that we are all on the same page makes it easy. Then moving on to moving on to the chaos con North America on August 20. We still have uh, the call for participation out. We extended it by one week. So please everyone who is coming or who can potentially come, please do submit what you would like to talk about. We are also thinking about having open workshop discussions and having unconference um, working discussions specific to the working groups. Um, but we really want to make this uh, chaos con for the community by the community. And we need to know what it is that you want to talk about. You don't have to give a presentation. If that's the format you want to do, great. If you rather lead a discussion or want to work through some metrics, that is also very welcome. And right now, so that we did extend the deadline to Friday, the 7th, but we only have five submissions so far. And, um, and we in particular like to encourage maybe some, some more diverse speakers. So if there are people that you know who could give good talks, I would encourage you to, to encourage them to submit, remind them that it's a, we're a lovely friendly bunch and it's a great place to give a presentation. So anything you can do to help us out would be uh, most appreciated because we, we really don't have a lot of, a lot of submissions yet. You will get submissions. Thanks. Thank you. So, yeah. Are there any questions from anyone about the call for proposals or the organization of the ChaosCon event or anything related? With that, I'm moving the conversation forward to talk about code of conduct in repositories. The approach we have taken so far was to copy paste the code of conduct markdown file and have a copy in every repository. Why do we do that? Because it clearly shows that there's a code of conduct. It's the right place to show that we have it in every repository. 
And also GitHub has some internal algorithms, as far as I know, where not having a code of conduct actually docks the ranking in their search. So code of conduct is the right thing to do, and it helps us having it. Having the full code of conduct copy duplicates information. And we were looking for a better way to do it in the common working group. And if you click on the link in the, um, in the minutes, you can see how the, working, the common working group is trying to solve the duplication of information simply by saying we do have a code of conduct in this uh, code of conduct markdown file, and then linking to one uh, truth of source, source of truth in the governance repository or the website, which one did we link to? Governance. Um, yeah, and this is modeled after kind of what the CNCF does. This is sort of modeled after what, um, the way that Kubernetes does their code of conducts across their many, many repositories. Thank you for that context, Don. So this is really, I put it on the agenda to, as a point of discussion to see what everyone thinks about it. And if this is something we might want to promote in other working groups and other repositories as well. Yeah, I tend to think we should be consistent across all of our repositories and use, um, I think we should use something like this across all of our repositories as opposed to having something copied and pasted where we could end up with different information if we ever decide to change the code of conduct. But uh, George, suppose we copy and paste and we have to make modification in one active group. So or in the code of conduct, would that not be like uh, keep those that are not very active behind time? Can we not put like a link and put one code of conduct, just like a highlighted link where it points to one major code of conduct uh, file, that if we update it, everybody sees it at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's what we're proposing. That basically each of the, each of the repositories would have a code of conduct markdown file, <coughs> but that code of conduct markdown file just contains a link to the main um, main code of conduct file as opposed to duplicating the, the work along with a link to how to report issues. Yeah, th this actually looks perfectly acceptable to me. Um, yeah, because I mean, the only thing they're going to, that linters are going to look for is that the file exists and that there's an email address listed in it. Okay, I, I hear some uh, approval of this approach. Is there anyone who has concerns with this approach? Okay, then I'm gonna put in the meeting minutes that the proposal is that all chaos repositories follow the same approach. Um, And then we can discuss it further on the mailing list since final decisions are made on the mailing list or through lazy consensus or through working groups actually implementing it. <laughs> so with that, we got through the agenda that we set ourselves at the beginning. Is there anything on someone, anyone's mind that they would like to bring up. This is the miscellaneous time. I don't see anyone raising a hand or unmuting themselves, which hopefully means you're all eager to get back to finishing metrics, <laughs> working on the good work that you're doing. I uh, thank everyone very much for participating today in our call and throughout the weeks and months 
putting everything together. I, I was just looking at our minutes. We have almost three pages of meeting minutes with just updates of what's happening in the community. And I think the amount of activity that we have is, is just amazing. Reflecting on that, I'm, I'm super happy with everyone here and the work that you're doing. So I just wanted to say that. And, and we're all happy that you're here, Georg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Ben. Okay, then I close the meeting and I see you all on a future call. All right, chaos time. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.